a nuclear energy continues to find its way into the conversation as a solution. Joining us, Nigam Aurora is the founder of the Aurora Report, stock picker, investor, but also by trade, a nuclear expert as well. Nigam, welcome back to the network. Thank you, Oliver. So last time we talked about kind of general the market, but uh, as we were talking about afterwards and I learned more about your background, uh, you're an engineer. You've got a bunch of patents in the right. nuclear world. Take us back um, into your kind of early beginnings of your career and expertise. Uh, what did you do in the nuclear world? Well, I started out as an engineer and a nuclear physicist a long, long time ago. I won't show my age, how long ago it was. <laughs> the nuclear, there were more <laughs> nuclear plants running, right? Yeah, nuclear was the hardest thing, right? Every kid wanted to be in the nuclear at that time. And um, early on in my career, I was very fortunate to come up with some breakthroughs that solved a lot of long-standing problems. And uh, this investment show, so I won't get into those. Um, well, tell us more about it, because I know a little bit. I've seen some yeah, of the, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. patents so, and so, the... Right, right. So, so the very first one was... Uh, um, Actually, the first implementation was at Zion, which is not far from here. Mm. It's since shut down. So nuclear plants emit radioactive iodine. You don't want radioactive iodine because if they emit, it gets in the grass, cows graze, gets in the milk, gets in your thyroid, you get a cancer. You die. <laughs> so there's strict limits. Mm -hmm. The problem is nuclear plants also emit something called xenon, uh, which is mostly harmless. And xenon has a backscatter that comes to the same energy peak where iodine-131 is. And they could never measure accurately. So when I started in the industry, everybody knew that the iodine-131 they were releasing, that they were stating they were releasing, was more than what they were actually releasing. Mm. Okay. But Nuclear Re Regulatory Commission very conservative and say, hey, that's what you got to do. So it would prevent the functioning of the Power facility plant. if they think there's too much of this chemical bouncing right. back. Sometimes they could not function at a full scope. So the question was, how do you measure it accurately? So that was my, one of my first things to figure out how to measure it accurately. Mm. And once I figured it out, I led the team for the full system development. First system was in, well, at that time, Zion was owned by Commonwealth Edison here in Illinois, right. like 45 miles from here. Uh, it was implemented, it was successful, and then was adopted industry-wide. Mm. So that's kind of an example. It's like a meter, basically, a process? It's, to... it's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's an instrument that is a detector that measures xenon, that measures iodine, and then you'd use a lot of software and all that, okay. figure out the computation and then ultimately report back, hey, this is what you really released. I see. Not what you thought you released. <laughs> so you found a, a solution to accurately measure the chemicals and what was happening right. uh, in, the, in the plants. And as that became sort of a staple of right. the process Correct. later on, as um, uh, there were a few incidents in nuclear right. energy, right. you were also, as I understand it, uh, a, a witness, uh, That's right. a scientific witness in the Three Mile Island case, Correct. is that right? I was. Tell me about was, that. Well, so when the Three Mile Island happened, uh, there were a lot of lawsuits filed against the operator of the Three Mile Island. There were also mm -hmm. lawsuits uh, filed against some of the vendors who had supplied equipment to Three Mile Island. And ultimately, they were all dismissed. So I was uh, expert witness for the defense, right? So my job was to say, hey, these utilities, these people, these equipment suppliers, did really nothing wrong. <laughs> Even though a partial meltdown happened. Mm -hmm. But these people, you know, made mistakes. Okay. But they were honest. There was not anything, you know, they could have foreseen and all that. No malfeasance. Malfeasance. Just... So that was my job. Okay. So uh, when you hear stuff like uh, Three Mile Island reopening again, uh, and Microsoft reserving all the power from it, what do you think? Well, so Three Mile Island had two units. One unit had an accident, so that was decommissioned. Other unit operated until 2019. And it's very ironic, uh, 2019 it was shut down because economically it was losing money. <laughs> right. It shut down for financial, <laughs> financial reasons. Financial big part of it. Right. And now the Microsoft comes along and says, hey, we're going to sign a 20-year contract if you restart the unit. Um, the crazy thing about that is, these are rumors. I have not been able to confirm. 
that Microsoft is going to pay twice the going rate for electricity. Okay. Okay. And that's why, and the plant is owned by Constellation Energy, symbol is CEG. Uh, it has run up so high. Uh, but, you know, again, there's a lot of hype. For example, the question I always ask is, so there, first of all, I don't know if the rumor is true. Mm -hmm. About what they're paying. But they're paying. But something adds up there because... Something adds up. Because, something happened. Something yeah, happened. a lot of these nuclear plants were not the most financially no, efficient no. at all. C correct. But the other thing is, and it's a 20-year contract, if you tell me they're going to be paying twice at the end of 20 years, that's one thing. If they're going to be paying 20 years, two years from now, uh, to twice, 22 years from now, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. So we don't know that. And, you know, the Constellation is going to spend about $1.6 billion, the B, like basketball. Uh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I've spent years of my life inside the nuclear plants, uh, including Three Mile Island. Um, and if I were to guess, they're not going to spend $1.6 billion. By the time they're done, it's going to be $3 billion or $4 mm. billion. <laughs> does, that make it, does that complicate the investment case for Microsoft at all, if they're paying not, over? Not, not so much for Microsoft, because Microsoft is so big. Uh, but it does complicate the investment case for Constellation Energy. That's mm. the most favorite stock these days of people you know, looking for nuclear power. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, it really complicates that. Uh, and, I, and the regulations, you know, I'm intimately familiar with regulations, what they're going to do, what they're going to have to do to restart the plant. Remember, this plant was built in the 70s, right? It's so old. <laughs> Just think of a house that was 50 years old, right? Yeah. You say, okay, I'm going to renovate it. You don't know what you're going to run into. <laughs> yeah. The um, category that you put, you've got a few categories, sure. uh, how to invest in this. Uh, CEG, Constellation is in the conventional nuclear power category, Vistra. Uh, uh, PEG, TLN in there, but there's also uranium. There's mm -hmm. uh, SMRs, the small modular reactors. Right, right. Uh, and then there's the fuel side. We've had Lightbridge CEO on, uh, which is the fuel that they're fuel innovating. Side, right. We've talked to Oclo, uh, right. which is SMR. Right. Within those categories, do you think that there are any particular appealing ones or should investors just kind of like get a basket? Get a basket. Yeah. Because, uh, so, so let's talk about it. The conventional, which four you named, um, so we model those out, and based on, when we model out basically what we're looking at, assuming Constellation is getting 120, you know, going ready 60 and so on and so on, mm. and we're making optimistic assumptions that there are more deals like this, reasonable. Mm -hmm. So Constellation I see on the screen is $273.72 yeah. right now, yeah. right? Uh, we model it. And we say, well, our target three years from now will be $330, mm -hmm. right? And downside, if things don't go right in execution, the stock could go down to maybe $170. Okay, maybe not the best trade-off then, 60 yeah. for so I, I, 100. You know, I, I, would, I would be apprehensive. Uh, Vistra, we do the same thing. We say downside, it could go, it's $130. Uh, downside, it could go down to maybe $80, $85. Mm -hmm. Upside, maybe 170. So it's not that great. Mm. And one other thing that I see is happening is in the media, I know I'm on media right now. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of misinformation because a lot of people who are recommending buying these things really don't know what they're talking about. Mm. Okay. Uh, and I'm not talking about, like you said, uh, Lightbridge CEO. Obviously, the guy knows what he's talking sure. about. Uh, a lot of these are kind of like nascent businesses. A lot of them nascent, are, have, they've very, been operating without a lot of revenue, some of them. Correct, correct. And the other thing is, you know, you, when, and this is what I tell investors, it's so important. When you hear something on the TV or social media, pay attention to who is saying it and what is their agenda, mm -hmm. right? So if right now I was running a smart modular reactor company and I got to be on your show, guess what? One of my jobs is to bring my stock higher. Of course, yeah. <laughs> right? That doesn't mean sure. everybody should listen to me. I mean, they should listen, but, you know, you got to kind of grain of salt there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I wonder in some of these trades. I assume they're going to be somewhat high beta trades because a lot high of them, right. the, the catch is that some of the conventional companies might have the most transparent financials, but to right. your point, they've run up a lot. Run up a lot. And then some of the other newcomers might have the most potential still, but you're probably going to have to stomach a wild ride. What do you Correct. think are the most important uh, pieces of information that need to fall into place? Is it regulatory? 
Is it actual like AI product? The end product needs to, you know, we need to have some clarity of how it's well, going to be powered. So, so it's very, very interesting. Uh, so I'll give you some stats yeah. as to how hyped up this is. Um, in the United States, uh, we are generating this year maybe 500 gigawatts of power. Okay. Out of that, 95 gigawatts, about 19% is nuclear. Okay. Okay. So go back to we're generating 500 gigawatts. Mm -hmm. For AI data centers, we'll use about five gigawatts. Five years from now, instead of five gigawatts, we'll be using 20 gigawatts. Okay. So we'll go up 15 gigawatts, right? Mm -hmm. But we're already generating 500 gigawatts, mm. right? So when you look at it that way, you say, yeah, there's growth. Growth. Right? But it's still 15 gigawatts out of 500 gigawatts we're generating now. It's not the enormous thing. Right. But if you listen to everything that's in the media, you never know because nobody is looking at numbers, right? So it's not a short <laughs> case. It's one thing to be long nuclear. Well, I haven't assured it. It's, it's <laughs> one thing to be long nuclear. It's not a case to short traditional energy. No. Because we're not. still going to have, what, 95% of energy right. produced outside nukes. Uh, that's exactly it. Not 95%, but 80% less okay. outside. Um, uh, I'm curious, uh, from, from your uh, history with the industry and kind of knowing some of the hesitations, do you think there's a big policy side to it? Do you think we need to have uh, like an embrace of the technology from a, a policy side? Well, we do, but here's the thing. This is very, very important, okay? It's true that nobody has died from nuclear power radiation exposure in this country. Okay. Okay, we came to partial meltdown, but nobody died at Three Mile Island. We had a really bad accident in Fukushima in Japan mm -hmm. when the tsunami mm -hmm. came. Uh, a lot of people died, but they died because they were trying to rush out, evacuate. Mm. Because of radiation, only one person died. Mm. Okay? And those, that's older technology. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, there's a risk, right? So, so it, it's like this. If somebody would say, Negam, if you cross a road, your risk of dying is one in 10 million. I don't know, what the heck, I don't care. Sure. Right? But if you tell me, Negam, if you cross the road, not only your risk is one in 10 million, 100,000 other people are going to die. I right. better pay attention. Right. right. So smart modular reactors have better safety systems than traditional ones. Mm. But the risk of an accident is not zero. Sure. Nobody's talking about it. Right. right? And then you got radioactive fuel. Right. Um, radioactive fuel stays radioactive after spent, after you use, use energy. It stays radioactive for 1,000 years. What do you do with it? Hmm. Right? right now it is you bury in the ground somewhere in formations. Okay, so one of the examples I was giving in a podcast the other day, which we do for our members, mm -hmm. that I remember when uh, we used to have glass bottles, mm -hmm. okay, and soda cans, okay. Yeah. So we gotta go, but the point is, it's a long, long issue of problems that nobody's talking about. <laughs> There's things that still need to fall into place, for That's sure. That's right. Well, it's a good introductory conversation. I love the perspective, Nick, I'm very cool. And uh, like the, uh, the history, into the present. Uh, Nigga Morora, the Rural Report, with some good thoughts on how to break down the nuclear investment thesis. Thank